Welcome to Live Big. I'm DJ Greer. And I'm David Greer. Have you ever found yourself stuck thinking about an event in the past? Well, in today's episode of Live Big, our dad is going to teach about the benefits of learning from a hurtful event and moving forward. Let's dig in. Genesis 7 and 13. On the very same day, Noah and Noah's sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and Noah's wife, and the three wives of his sons with them entered the ark. We know that after that it rained 40 days and 40 nights, and the globe was, was never the same. The world that Noah left before the flood was, was totally different. Uh, after the flood. It's just a whole different world. And I think we're in a very similar watershed moment. America, in many respects, will never be the same again after this period that we are currently in. You know, we can't go back and change what has been, but we can change how things end. So let's, let's handle this properly and well. Genesis 9 and 1. So God blessed. Now, the term translated blessed literally means to kneel. And what's difficult about this passage, when I, when I first uh, read it, was, you know, it, it makes sense for a human, particularly in the ancient world, to, to kneel before a king and to, to kneel before a superior in stature or status because that's the way they showed respect and, and honor at that particular time in history. But why would the Bible picture God? Uh, getting down on bended knee. That didn't quite make sense to me until I really dug in. It says, so God what? Blessed. Now, literally, it means God got down on bended knee and he blessed Noah. Now, I, I thought about that and, and I was really, you know, bringing it to the Lord. Lord, what, what, why, how did you, did you get on your knees before Noah? And he reminded me when my boys were, were little, I'd at times get down on my knees to, to dress them. Uh, sometimes to play with them, other times to, to talk with them. And the deal was Noah's arms were, were too short to reach up to God, so God had to reach down to Noah. A blessing is simply anything God does to meet you on your level. So a blessing is if you're hungry, it's when uh, God brings food. So if you're lonely, it's when God brings company. A blessing is when you're weak, he'll make you strong. So whenever God gets down on our level and gets involved in our situation, that is a Bible blessing. So God blessed, got involved in the lives of Noah and his sons. Now, every ethnicity on the planet today originates with these three boys, Ham, Shem, and Japheth. In them, the Chinese were blessed. In them, whites were blessed. In them, blacks were blessed. In them, all the browns were blessed. Though many have tried, you cannot curse what God has blessed. And all racism is, it's the maximum amount of tension for the minimum reason. And that, that's all it, it is because it really doesn't have uh, any grounds. God blessed Noah and his sons, all three of his boys, leaving no future ethnicity out of God's blessing. And he said to them, now notice that God blessed through his word. There's no, there's more power in one word from God than, than all the power of the enemy combined. So when God released a blessing on the, those boys, there was nothing the devil could do to stop that particular blessing. God blessed Noah and his sons, and watch what he said to them. Be fruitful and multiply. Notice the order. Multiplication only comes after fruitfulness. God's agenda is only to multiply the fruitful, not to multiply the useless. Hear, hear what I'm saying. Matthew 13 and 12. Listen to Jesus because this is something of a hard saying. For whoever has to him will be given. So it's not those who have opportunities that will be blessed. It's those who use their opportunity that God blesses. And he, this is the person that uses what they have, the person that has and, and has, has been faithful with what he has. That person, only that person will have what? Abundance. So we see here that God is not only a good father, he's a good business person. The servant who gets results 
is the one that gets promoted. And there's no, there's no substitute for getting it done. And we, we see this throughout the scripture. But Jesus continues. He says, and this, this is tough. But whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. So if you're not faithful with $10, don't expect God to give you $100. And this is why, by the way, so many business people are, are stuck today. You know, you, you weren't faithful what God told you to do with the hundreds of thousands. And for that reason, he won't release you into the millions. Now, he wants to release you into that level, but you got to be faithful with the hundreds of thousands. One of the smartest things any business person can do is find a solid, Bible-believing, biblical, Jesus-loving church and get behind its vision. And by the way, that, that's good preaching. That, that's important. Get behind it. And if you're faithful with the little bit, watch God give you more. But whoever does not have even that, or even what he has will be taken away from him. Now, this is where people get into a lot of trouble uh, because the devil gets in our ear and he said, well, it's because of your education. It's because of your, or your lack of education or because of your, your, your background or maybe it's because of the government. Now, I, I get it because there's some truth in it and that's why, you know, the devil uses it so successfully because, you know, sometimes culture's against us, sometimes the government's against us and our background can certainly be against us. If you're humble enough to, to work the ground and, and do what God has called you to do, you will see Great results. Let's go to back to Genesis 9 and 1. God blessed. He what blessed? He what blessed Noah and all his sons. That, that's, again, every ethnic group on the planet. And he said to them, be fruitful, multiply, and fill. Now, we like this next part. Fill the what? Earth. God wanted his image bearers to have, uh, you know, a prodigious sex drive, like, like, you know, second to no other creature on the planet. And by the way, you can't go anywhere on the planet today and not see this verse of Scripture fulfilled. I mean, you, you, you'll see the results of this blessing if you go to huts, if you go to igloos, if, if you go on boats, trains, some hell, even airplanes, and we got to work on that. Old people, young people, fat people, skinny people, you know, short people, tall people, you know, uh, we can't seem to get enough uh, of trying to somehow fill up this planet with more and more people. Verse 18. Now the sons of Noah who went out of the ark. Now this is important because in this chapter, God releases or shows or creates the, the, the rainbow and it's actually a sign of the covenant. And I like what James Baldwin, the, the famous writer said. He said, God gave Noah the rainbow sign, no more water, but fire next time. You know, the three boys, their names were Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and Ham was the father of Canaan. These three were the sons of Noah, and from these the whole earth was populated. By the way, every culture in history, nearly every culture in history, has a story of a global or great flood. Whether it's the Aztecs, whether it's the Sumerians, uh, across the globe and around the world, you hear this, this, this story of a global flood. Why? You know, folks didn't have the internet back then. They didn't have television. They, a lot of folks couldn't read, so they didn't have books. Uh, you know, folks were separated by vast bodies of water, but they all came up with this story of the flood. Why? Why would that happen? Because the flood really happened. You see, every time you see a rainbow, let it be a reminder that God used water first time, but fire will come next time. And we got to keep that in mind. If he did it, then, and by the way, it's, it's extra biblical sources let us know that something catastrophic and cataclysmic happened on planet Earth. And if he did it then, he will do what he promised to do again. You're watching the Live Big broadcast. We want to wish our dad and all the fathers out there a happy Father's Day. So stick around for the exciting second half of this teaching. You don't want to miss this. Check out the Derek Grimm Ministries YouTube channel. Revisit your favorite moments from the Live Big broadcast and watch popular teachings. Get in the now hot takes and dive into Bishop Greer's Ministry Minutes and bite-sized noonday teachings that can only be found online. Get all of this and more at home or while on the go. So, subscribe to the Derek Greer Ministries YouTube channel and hit the notification bell to get fresh content from Derek Greer that will help you grow stronger, live bigger, and get closer to God.
And Noah began to be a farmer. He's being a good provider for his family, a good father. And he planted a, a vineyard. So while he was trying to do the right thing, uh, the wrong thing happened. And I, I like what, what a poet said, and I, I want to read it. It said, failure should not be our undertaker. It's delay, not defeat. It is a temporary detour, not a dead-end street. Then Noah drank the wine. Now, a glass of wine was not necessarily the problem. However, the next development certainly was and was drunk. Now, you got to also understand Noah had just experienced watching all of his neighbors drown. The only folks on the boat were his sons and his son's wives and his wife. So their cousins, their aunts and uncles, uh, folks that they had pre preached to for years, the Bible actually says he was a preacher of righteousness. They would not listen. They would not come to the Lord. And, and the Bible says the Lord shut them in. And there comes a place where, where God draws a line. He said, I've been gracious. I've been merciful. I've been calling you. But, but right now, I, I draw the line. So heard the screams and, and he heard the yells. And, and I'm sure he saw bodies floating uh, on, on the water. And this was a traumatic experience for him. And it says, and, and he became what? Drunk. Now, there's no excuse for this, but uh, again, th this, is, this is part of what we're going to get at today. We, we have to be careful about judging people for sinning differently than we do. And, you know, there was no excuse for what he did. It was, it was wrong. But nonetheless, how we handle other people's wrongs sometimes says more about us than it even does about that person. Again, the Bible said that the Lord shut them in. You see, God will open doors that no man can shut, but he will also shut doors that no man can open. How much better would Noah's story be if instead of turning to the bottle, he would have turned to the Lord? But, but he didn't. And he became uncovered, so it went from drunkenness to this uncovering. And uh, you kind of say drunkenness is a gateway to your next mistake, and that's why we have to be so careful about it. It says, and he became uncovered in his tent. Now, the term uncovered in the Hebrew has a very wide uh, range of meanings. Uh, there, there's a lot of theories about what went on in this tent. But all I can be 100% about, sure about is that, you know, Noah somehow ended with, with his backside out in his tent, and it was a humiliating and, and embarrassing moment in his life. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father, and watch this, and he told. Now, again, we're just going to dig into the language just a little bit more here. The Hebrew here doesn't mean just to inform. It means to tell with delight, to tell with a smirk on your face. And you got to mark those in your life that get excited about your pain, that get happy over your hurts. He saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brothers outside, instead of sympathizing with the humanness of his dad, again, he, he gloated. And the Bible says in the book of Galatians that, you know what, he that's spiritual, you restore that next person. And, and you know, as you do it, you got to do it with kindness and, and, and sympathy. Um, you know, hating the garment spotted by the flesh, hating the sin, but recognizing there go I, save for the grace of God. So instead of trying to help the dad, the son actually outed the dad, but God was watching. But Shem and Japheth, instead of pointing the finger at their daddy saying, you're supposed to be a man of God, you know, you, you're supposed to be a Christian. Instead of writing a tell-all book, instead of posting the pictures on the internet, watch what these two boys did, and we need to learn from these two boys. Now, we need to call things what they are, but, but that's not what we're talking about today. Shem and Japheth took a what? Garment. Though their dad was totally humiliated. They were like, he ain't heavy. He's my daddy. And that's what I want to say to us on this Father's Day. Your dad may have made some mistakes. You as a dad may have made some mistakes. But we have to learn 
to cut our parents some slack. And here's the deal. We reap what we sow. And if we don't forgive our parents, often our children will never forgive us. When we don't let go, it becomes more of a reflection of our character, not just theirs. Shem and Japheth took a garment, and watch what they did. Body language is important here. This is a picture of what was going on in their hearts. They laid it on both their shoulders. They didn't even want to see it because they didn't want to gloat in it, and they saw what their brother just did. They didn't even want to see it. They laid it both on their shoulders. Dad was wrong, but these boys had broad enough shoulders to show kindness in the midst of Noah's poor judgment. And for some reason, I, I, don't, I don't know why we do this. When folks love the Lord, we, we, we give them a standard that's so high that no one but Jesus can ever uh, reach. And Noah was a man of God. He was someone that God used in his generation, but he was not a perfect man. All of us have feet of clay. I don't care how often you come to church. I don't care if you live in the church. I don't care if all day long you listen to the Bible and you got a Bible under your pillow. The reality is all of us at times are going to make mistakes and we have to, 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 to keep in mind that there's one Savior. Now people can listen to me and say, well, what are you saying? Well, I should go and, and do sideways things so God can forgive me. God forbid. That is not at all what I am saying. But what I am saying is when it does happen, how we respond in those moments really matter. And these boys went backwards and covered the nakedness of their father. Now, again, I'm not saying that we should never call out someone's wrong, but there's a way to do it. I'm not saying that we should never mention a parent's wrong, but there is a way to do it. What I really want to tell you, though, if you really think about it, it's useless to dwell on what you can never change. And what happened has happened. And you being hateful about it, it will not change what has happened. It goes on. Now, watch again. They, they put this garment on their shoulder. They wouldn't even look at their dad. And this is the heart toward the father. They walk in backwards. And then it says their faces were turned away. Instead of staring and gloating, ah, ha, ha, ha. They wouldn't even look at it. They didn't want to, want, want, want to face it. Their faces were turned, and they did not see their father's nakedness. We have to be careful about staring too long and too hard at our parents' mistakes and other people's mistakes. Learn from them. In fact, be glad that they made them instead of you and move on. Some of the mistakes my parents have made, I've learned from and my kids have benefited from. And some of the mistakes I have made, my kids will learn from and their children will benefit from. So instead of, you know, always being so bent out of shape, just do better. And if you do better, you've learned from it and some good would have come out of perhaps a very, very awful. And I'm not making light of some of the terrible things that some parents have done to us. But if you don't repeat it, you become the winner and the better uh, for, for the events that happen in your life. Verse 24. So Noah awoke from his wine, meaning he was asleep. He was knocked out. I mean, he drank. He didn't just, he was drunk. He was, he was drunk. And the boys, they saw, they saw the mess. He didn't even wake up, it seems, when they came in the room. And, uh, but he finally awoke from his wine, and he knew what his younger son had done to him. My best guess is that as... Ham saw the humiliation of his father. Canaan was right next to him, his youngest son. And our kids pick up more than we realize. And his youngest son saw him gloating. And I, my guess is he probably participated in the gloating because we're going to see some things in a couple moments. Then Noah said, cursed be Canaan. Why would Noah curse Canaan? This is so important because he couldn't curse Ham. You cannot curse what God has blessed. One more time. He cursed Canaan and not Ham. And then he said to Canaan, see, when the blessings of the Lord are upon you and they're real, there's nothing the devil can do. He said, Canaan, now there's going to be some reaping and sowing. You saw what your daddy did and you're going to pick that up. 
and uh, because you, you, you got the same attitude as your daddy, some things are going to happen. He said, a servant of servants, he shall be to his brethren. Now, Christians, Muslims, and Jews alike have used this verse to justify enslaving Africans. The argument was that when Canaan was cursed, that actually he turned black. Number one, though, here's the problem. First, that's not in the Bible. Number two, Canaan was not the father of Africans. Ham was, and Ham was blessed. Canaan was the father of a Near Eastern people that actually Joshua uh, eventually uh, defeated when he conquered uh, the Canaan land, and he's the one that fulfilled this prophecy. You know, a, a prejudiced mind is a terrible thing to, to waste. And, and you know, we, we, sometimes when we got these, these awful thoughts in our heads, we'll do anything to try to prove them. But, you know, Ham was not cursed. Canaan was cursed. Canaan land is where Israel is today. Ham, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, Ham actually was the progenitor of all Africans. That was uh, the, the African continent. That is not the Middle East. So uh, the curse did not come on black people, and the color of our skin is not the result, again, of a curse. Cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants, he shall be to his what? Brethren. Now, here's what I want to say to you. This is important. If we don't listen... If we don't honor our first authorities, we will be required to submit to secondary authorities. Canaan obviously did not honor his grandfather, so he had to learn to obey as a slave. You see, to forgive a parent is to set a prisoner free only to realize the real prisoner is you. Ephesians 6 and 2, we're going to move to the New Testament so you can see this principle uh, here. This is super important for Father's Day. And I'm not even going to read the whole verse, but we're going to end here. Paul says by the Holy Spirit, he says to all Christians everywhere, I don't care what household you are in and what they do. You don't have to agree with everything they do, but you can show respect. Watch this. Honor doesn't mean do something wrong when they tell you to do it. And I'm not talking... Honor, it doesn't mean that they're right. Honor, just like with the president, we might not agree with the things he says. Honor the office. Honor your father and mother. Now, we all love moms, and we, we cut mom a little more slack. But what we need to see here is God includes dads. Be like, Bishop, you don't know my father. You don't know he left me. He abandoned me. He, he, he did awful things. He beat me. Some of you, he molested me. He was an awful, dark, evil man. You're right. I don't know about your particular dad. But what I do know is hurt people hurt people, which means someone must have hurt him for him to hurt you. Someone abandoned him before he abandoned you. Everyone has a story. Everyone comes from somewhere. And when we show respect to a person who doesn't deserve it, it's important. It becomes a reflection of our character and not theirs. Like my father stated in today's teaching, we have to be careful about staring too long at the mistakes of others. That's right. Even in the case of our loved ones, people are going to make mistakes. It's best to learn from the mistakes of others, forgive them, and move on with life. Be sure not to repeat their mistakes, and in the end, you will become better for it. Before we go, we want to take a moment to tell you about a book our dad poured his soul into, When God Stops. Not only does this book dig into the lives of eight figures in the Bible and what they did to get God to stop and address their particular situation, our Father also gives his first-hand accounts of his own experiences with God. If you are looking to jumpstart your faith, you need to get your own copy of this book. The announcer is coming with more information. Have you ever felt like there has to be more? You know God sees you, but wonder if he can stop and give special attention to a specific area in your life? When God Stops is the latest book from Dr. Derek Greer that shows us how to stand out in the crowd 
and get God-sized results. When God Stops highlights eight hidden figures from the Bible who show us how to dream, think, and live the type of life that God not only notices, but rewards. Not only that, but in this book, Dr. Greer shares things about himself that he has never shared before. Hear his personal testimony. Go beyond what you see into some of Dr. Greer's most life-changing moments with God. If you want to jumpstart your faith, get God's special attention, and see real results in your life, go to whengodstops.com today. That's whengodstops.com to find out more. Thanks for joining us for today's episode of Live Big. Until next time, I invite you to subscribe to the Derek Greer Ministries YouTube channel to access Our Father's latest teachings, revisit your favorite broadcasts, watch Ministry Minutes, and share your favorite teachings with your friends, family, and loved ones. While you are there, be sure to hit the notification bell so you know when new content has been uploaded. Best of all, subscribing to the Derek Greer Ministries YouTube channel is free. More information is coming soon, and until next time, live big. Check out the Derek Grimm Ministries YouTube channel. Revisit your favorite moments from the Live Big broadcast and watch popular teachings. Get in the now hot takes and dive into Bishop Greer's Ministry Minute and bite-sized noonday teachings that can only be found online. Get all of this and more at home or while on the go. So, subscribe to the Derek Greer Ministries YouTube channel and hit the notification bell to get fresh content from Derek Greer that will help you grow stronger, live bigger, and get closer to God. Connect with Derek Greer Ministries on social media to access Bishop Greer's latest teachings and content. Follow on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Also, be sure to subscribe to Bishop Greer's YouTube channel at Dr. Derek Greer VA and get the latest episodes, ministry minutes, noonday teachings, and more. While you're there, be sure to hit that notification bell to find out when Bishop Greer's latest power-packed videos are uploaded. So subscribe and get ready to propel your spiritual life forward in 2021 and beyond. Derek Greer Ministries is certified by the ECFA. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time on Live Big with Derek Greer.